In the first four months of 1997, flooding throughout the Midwest caused hundreds of millions of dollars in damage and displaced thousands of residents and businesses. Spring runoff, coupled with extreme weather in the northern Plain states, required another team to assemble just one month later in North Dakota. Flatten them out a little bit so we get a good feel. We've had a number of floods since 1965 and we've always won. And this was a flood where uh, the predictions were such that we thought we had things in hand. We knew it was a major flood, but it was going to be okay. And uh, all of a sudden it was five feet higher than predicted heights and uh, it just totally inundated the city. Soaring temperatures on the northern plains in early April 1997 melted a record 10-foot winter snowpack, transforming the Red River of the North into a 40-mile wide lake. What would become known as the flood of the century in the upper Midwest put 4.5 million acres of North Dakota and Minnesota underwater and forced one million people to abandon their homes. Especially hard hit was Grand Forks, North Dakota, where damage estimates topped $1 billion. Many of the city's 50,000 residents had to be evacuated as they tried to hold back the waters. So we were all working uh, as one agency, if you will, the National Guard, the Coast Guard, and us. Uh, we essentially went you know, neighborhood to neighborhood, evacuating uh, different areas as the night progressed until we eventually ended up all the way over to Washington Street. Bad went to worse when a section of the city's historic downtown became engulfed in flames. Traditional firefighting tactics proved ineffective against burning buildings surrounded by five feet of moving water. We went to firefighting with uh, crash fire rescue trucks, uh, brought in uh, a chemical drop uh, of fire retardant uh, with, a, with a fixed wing tanker aircraft, brought in a helicopter and did airdrops. We put our two of our frontline pumpers on flatbed trailers and um, once we got through the fire situation or had that under control, then we started looking at the long-term cleanup aspect. The cleanup, I think, uh, if you, the more you look at it, the more you realize what a long uh, labor is, it's going to be. When you go down the streets and see the piles of trash, it's just uh, awesome, the incredible amount of uh, junk that's going to be tossed out and handled. The magnitude of the cleanup effort was staggering. FEMA, the lead agency that oversees disaster relief on a federal level, called in EPA to assess and coordinate the cleanup of potentially hazardous materials caused by the flood. EPA, in turn, requested logistical support from the U.S. Coast Guard's Pacific Strike Team. ...are mostly unsafe, underwater, or they have not returned to their homes yet. Whenever they require assistance from the U.S. Coast Guard National Strike Force, they'll give us a call, we'll come in and essentially do whatever is ne necessary to work up an organization, which in this case would be the Incident Command System. We essentially divide the organization from the OSC, the on-scene coordinator, down through safety, outreach programs, and then there's four major sections of the ICS system. In each one of those sections, there's been a Coast Guard personnel there just to assist the contractors and EPA personnel who come in to get them on the same mindset with everybody else as far as how the organization should work. Once that's done, it's a pretty much self-sufficient organization. With the incident command system up and running, the first task was identified. Over 200 calls were coming in every day for assistance in the removal of home heating oil from residential basements. Initially, we uh, pumped oil from heating oil tanks out of basements. We also used absorbent pads. We put it on the oil, on the water, and then we take the pads off. Uh, we also had to pump the tanks if there was any left in it. They hold around 250 to 200 gallons of diesel fuel. That was the initial phase. 
The tool of choice for removing the oil water mixture that had accumulated in the fuel tanks were tanker trucks equipped with heavy duty vacuum systems known as vac trucks. In essence, a supercharged shop vac capable of siphoning off 150 gallons in approximately 25 minutes. We would have to find a way to get that hose down to the basement. In some cases it, it was through doorways, other cases we went through basement windows. They have a large stinger um, plastic hose or attachment at the end of their hose and they would stick that down to the tank and they would start pumping. As soon as those vac trucks are full, they are taken into a central staging area and deposited into a frack tank. The frack tank, a large holding container designed for the oil industry, allowed the oil water mixture to separate. The water was then processed through Grand Forks wastewater treatment system and the oil was taken to a petroleum recycling facility. While the oil cleanup continued, another group was focusing on the collection of hazardous household items. Residents were instructed to place consumer quantities of paint, pesticides, and other hazardous household products on the curb, separate from other waste being collected. EPA teams then canvassed Grand Forks neighborhoods, collecting the products and pre-staging the items as they worked. The materials were then transported to a secure staging area where products were received and segregated. Unknown substances were tested and identified, and like materials bulked. The bulk materials were then restaged for eventual off-site transport and disposal.